Time to shine today, podcast varsity squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I have told my story about uh, freezing on stage, <laughs> being a speaker. People that actually see me now, they're like, "There's no way, Fergie, you're all over the place. You're fun." But I'll tell you what, man. Like, they, it's true that they say that people fear the public speaking more than they fear death. A lot of times, getting up, be publicly humi- humiliated. My good friend Amanda Rose here. And actually, she's kind of a home girl here in, in South Florida, not too far away, which is fantastic. But she also has a pretty cool story on her about page of her freezing and her taking that lesson, not stopping, leveling up and keep moving. OK, so Amanda Rose Igo is a six figure speaking success strategist, is an award winning speaker, expert and best selling author. She's been featured on CBS, NBC, Fox and in Chicken Soup for the Soul. Amanda Rose is the author of Pain Free Public Speaking and Share Your Story. And I believe she also co-authored a book that I read about seven years ago um, about getting the, the uh, I'm going to actually tell you guys what it is because I'm like, I know this name before, Media Magic. I believe she yes. authored that. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to invite Amanda Rose on and Amanda, thank you for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today podcast for our squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Well, it's, they're kind of behind me. <laughs> <laughs> but the main oh. one is teal and turquoise. Oh. I've been known to be in airports with my teal suitcase, <laughs> my teal dress on. Are you, <laughs> my a Lily, teal earrings. <laughs> are you a Lily Pulitzer wearer? No, no. no okay. I just... Yeah, I just love, I love that. And then, then the magentas and the pinks are my secondary color. Oh, I love it. I love it. You rock the pink. I, I do rock pink too as well. I got that skin color that I can actually pull it off. Um, so seriously, thank you so much for coming. I respect you immensely uh, with, with your speaking accolades and how you can actually level up people to speak and get their story across. And so I want to kind of get to the roots a little bit, maybe about that story of you freezing and how you used what you learned from that to level up and to be the fantastic human being, author, speaker, teacher that you are now? You know, I think things happen in our life for a reason. And those things often happen to us so that we can then help others when we've overcome that thing. So for me, my challenges with speaking started early on when I was a little kid. I tried out for a play one time. And the second time I tried out for a talent show. And both times, the entire class laughed at me, not laughing at me because I was funny. They literally laughed at me. And this paralleled and created a pattern with me where I would have ozonoms, nervous laughter. I, as an adult, I'd go to networking meetings. My hands would shake so bad I had to sit on them. So the it changed for me was not because I thought, oh, I could change this stuff. I thought this is how I was because fate had a different plan for me. I took a job with a nonprofit organization as a fundraiser. Okay. And they didn't, they told, they didn't tell me when I took the job that I literally have to stand in front of hundreds of people and speak. <laughs> I had no speaking experience whatsoever. And I like to say my mama didn't raise a quitter. So I could have quit that job and said, sorry, you didn't tell me I'm going to go find another job. Or I could say, okay, I'm going to figure this stuff out. Right. And then I started to get wins. I learned what to do and what not to do. And I was amazing at creating the content for those presentations that board members would come to me and say, you need to teach everyone to do what you're doing. I'm like, what? wait a minute. How did I go from this <laughs> communication disaster to somebody who is really good at it? Yes. And then that awakening started within my mind. Well, maybe this is what I'm here to do. And I walked away from that job 17, over 17 years ago, and I've not looked back. I love it. And that took some cojones. That's that's. To be able to do that. Now, how did that first speech go when you're up in front of all those people and your in the nonprofit? Well, I was smart enough to know I don't know what I don't know. So I invested in myself personally mm. to learn some of the things that I didn't know. Right. So it went really well. I did because this was many <laughs> years ago, right? So this was over 20 years ago when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was yeah. on TV. So I was talking about charitable gifts and annuities, one of the most boring topics in the world. Sorry, <laughs> planners and stuff like that, but it's boring, right? <laughs> right, right. And I made, I made a game out of it called Who Wants to Be a Chocolate Heir? So here I am, 100 people plus in the audience, vying to answer questions to win this chocolate. <laughs> really? And that way they were learning information, but it was also fun and engaging. Wow. Did you come up with that, Amanda Rose? 
First Monday? presentation I did. Yep, you bet. Wow, that's amazing. That takes uh, just forethought, thinking, and actually infusing fun into something. So on a personal level, are you kind of a fun person? Some of this vibrant goes out and I'm not saying get on the bar and dance, but I'm just, saying, <laughs> did you get away from sitting on your hands as you got better at public speaking? I did because I didn't really have a choice. Okay. Okay. Right? So for me, my passion of serving people was much bigger than my fear. So when people think of fear, right? And it's not the only reason people come to me, but it's one of the reasons it's because when you, when your passion is the driver, fear cannot exist at the same time. My passion to make a difference in the people and lives of other people was way greater than my fear. That is amazing. And my that lack is, of skills at the time. That is amazing. That's putting that that's being such a servant leader. It's what we go by here, the go giver kind of standpoint of a lot of things and just basically putting other people's thoughts and ideas kind of ahead of your own fear. And it kind of makes you not scared. Like myself, when I speak, I kind of go into an alter ego in a sense. I mean, when I walk into places, Amanda, it's Amanda Rose. I, you know, I, I, I kind of reserved, you know, I have to be, because I'm a kind of a bigger guy and I don't want to come off as kind of like a bully guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm still a Midwestern guy that loves to hug you and have a good time, yes. but I'm also reserved. So, but when I get on stage, I kind of go into this different person, but stay true to my story. Is that any of that? Do you kind of, it gets out of my own way. Is that's what I'm saying? Is that any part of your training that you do? Absolutely, because we we need to bring our authentic self, and there's many parts of us. Yes, right. It's buried sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's buried, but I think speaking was one of the things that makes you bring your full self at some point. Right. Because it keeps calling you forward. Love it. Right. So it keeps it keeps pushing you out of your comfort zones, and the more authentic you are to yourself and who you really are the more the audience is going to resonate with you because they're going to feel you're being true yes. to who you right. are. I love that. I love, love that. Yeah. Cause authentic. And I'm actually reading a book right now called hacking, hack, how to hack a human by my good friend, Seth Erickson. And he tells the exact same thing uh, but he's a story, right? He owns, he has a company called Storify, fantastic company, but it, it, it's about being authentic, true to yourself, be able to, but still being able to portray things in a story that are going to keep people captivated and touch that emotional button. Correct. Yes. Yeah. That's what I see with the YouTube videos that I've watched of you. It's like you emotionally um, a, a attack me in a sense. And, and I'm not talking aggressive. I'm talking like, wow, I, I can relate to that. So tell me a little bit on how maybe you coach. Actually, let's go back. When you start bringing in somebody to coach them or a group of people to coach them, what do you find is their biggest blind spot when they start their coaching endeavors? I'm sorry, they're speaking endeavors. Not knowing what to say. Okay. Because somebody can often feel like, oh, I'm a great speaker, right? I'm really confident, comfortable and confident on stage, and I think I know what I'm doing. But when it comes to the material, they don't know how to put a talk together, yes. right? Right. <laughs> they end up throwing up a bunch of PowerPoint slides and calling it a day, right. right? There's no audience engagement. There's nothing that's emotionally connected in the audience. So they really struggle with that because I think every presentation needs to emotionally connect with the audience compel them to take the action steps that you want and also highlight your expertise. Yes. It's got to do all those three things. I like to say a great presentation to balance the masculine and the feminine, okay. right? So they have heart, right? Which is the feminine, but they have strength and power, which is the masculine. All great speakers know how to bring those two things together and having a great talk that does those things is key. Wow. Wow. Let's, let's back it up a little bit. You said connect with the audience. There's, and there was two other things that you put after that. Yeah. So connect, connect with them. Right. right? So do you, having your audience do things is important, right? Sure. Having them involved in the presentation is key. Right. Right. So then you also need to compel them to take action because there's many speakers will go out and they'll get, share these great tips, but there's no, there's no push forward, not an aggressive push, push forward to get them to take the action steps that you want. You got to get them to be motivated Love to that. do it. Right. Yes. And the last part is to highlight your expertise, highlight your expertise without overwhelming the audience by data dumping on them. Wow. Yeah. Right. With too much information that makes our heads spin. Wow. Love that. Love it. So when you're bringing people in, to whether it's an audience that you're speaking to with le leveling up the ladies or or anybody, maybe even a one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching session for 
uh, was speaking, is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? Great question. They would ask me if they never do. That's a great question. I would say, how do you know whether something makes sense to share or not? I <laughs> love it. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. It, I'm sorry. I'm taking notes. I got pages yeah. of notes, squad. So I hope you're taking them as well. Yes. Yeah, because sometimes people, and I did this before, where I, I got it up in front of a, a group of individuals and I just, and I froze because I knew what I was saying wasn't really resonating in a sense. Mm -hmm. I saved it, but it, 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 knowing what you just said with a connect, can get them involved, uh, compel them to take action and with your expertise, if you put those three together, you can kind of have a story that you can roll out, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's it. much stronger that way. I love it. I'll be honest with you and I'll be honest with everyone that's listening. It's way too many people think, I'm a decent speaker, so it's okay. It's never okay. You always want to put your best because your audience deserves your best. Yes. So okay, good enough, comfortable speaking is just never enough in my opinion. I'm always fine tuning my own craft, even though I've been doing this for so many years. I'm sure. always trying to push my limit. Right. And everyone should always do that because your audience deserves the best part of you. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So when you're bringing the, the, the squad together that you're going to teach, what do you start to make them, make them more comfortable with your presentation style? I would say people are really comfortable with my presentation style because it's yeah. very conversational. Yes. It's, I'm very real, I'm very authentic to who I am. The way that I deliver information, and it's also how I teach my clients to deliver the information, is very conversational. You're not talking at them, you're talking with them. Yes. So I think most people, very just based on who I am and how I deliver, they feel comfortable with me because they just feel like I'm just having a conversation with them. Even though I know exactly yeah. what I'm going to say, right? And right. where I'm moving each part of that presentation, but it's very just like, just like you and I having a chat today. Same right. thing. Right, exactly. That's what I try to tell people. Like, what do you think? And I'm like, I'm just having a chat with people that are up there and I have the knowledge to be able to, to pay it forward to them because I'm regurgitating everything from people in my past that leveled me up. And, and I'm actually writing a book right now called Regurgitate because like you say, Tony Robbins regurgitated Jim Rohn back to Earl Nightingale, back to Wallace. Well, all the way back to the Stokes, all we're really doing is regurgitating things in a story that can re resonate and compel people to take action. I love that about what you just said. So what do you think your strengths are with speaking and how much do you appreciate them? Oh my God, I love my strengths. <laughs> I will say my strengths show up in my own presentation and in, my, in when I coach my clients. I think we're all given gifts and talents. Right. I would say my number one gift, which is a combination of the two of, is my wordsmithing abilities. So I can imagine that I, if a client comes to me, or even when I'm doing it myself, what does that audience need? And from the moment they open their mouth to all the way to the closing to deliver it in the way that the audience is going to receive that information. Now, even though I have a college education, I was not book smart, mm -hmm. right? I was a BC. Sometimes a D student when I, right? <laughs> Me too. And, right there, right? Right? <laughs> and I didn't read a lot of books, but somehow I gotta tell you, somehow I have, I'm an incredible wordsmith, but I also use my intuitive guidance to help me create things that are in a way that the client or the audience wants to hear things. So for example, I'm working with somebody who's an image consultant. So before we even worked on her talk, I was like, oh, what's her opening? it just comes to me right like that exactly what she needed to do and of course right. she loved it right right yeah where do you think that comes from that spirit intuition. okay <laughs> yeah your spirit your passionate source. yeah that's yeah. awesome how about weaknesses my weaknesses mm -hmm. i did not see myself as a leader now i saw myself as a leader when it came to running events and running my programs, but I did not see myself a leader in my own business. Mm. So when I started hiring team members, I would be challenged with having conversations that where I had to address an issue. Gotcha. 
culture. What do leaders know how to do? They know how to address issues with grace and with ease, right? And get yes. stuff done the way they need to get done. And so that was really a blaring red light for me and saying, man, this is important for me to step this part up. Yes. Love it. That's amazing. So, Amanda Rose, have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Long time ago. Okay. Let's get that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the double deuce, the 22-year-old Amanda Rose. What knowledge nuggets, that's what we call them here, time to shine today. What knowledge nuggets would you drop on her, maybe help her shorten her learning curve, level up and blast through in life, maybe just a little bit quicker? Yeah. And then one comes to my mind is not everyone's going to love you and let it go. <laughs> yes. I really struggled with that. And that was also blocking me from being my authentic self. I was always trying to get every person in my audience every, to love me. And it's impossible. They may not like me because Amanda Rose is an unusual name. They might not like me because they can't say my last name. I go. They may not like me because I remind them of sister-in-law. They may not like me for any reason <laughs> under the sun yes. that they created. Right? right. <laughs> so I can't control that. Right. Right. And I love that you said that because it's something I struggled with before. I mean, like, oh, my gosh, criticism. Oh, my gosh, what's going to happen? But then, you know, I made a New Year's resolution since 2009, and I've made the same one every year. And it's worked in spades for me is that I make someone smile every single day. And that unless I've hurt you or disrespected you, I give zero you know what about what you think about me. I mm -hmm. don't care. It's just like, I am going to be who I am. And if I haven't hurt you or disrespected you, and again, just let it go. I love what you said. So Amanda Rose, how do you want your dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and your death date. How do you want that dash remembered? Which hopefully it's a long ways away, but how, how do you want it remembered? That all right, it makes me emotional. She believed in others even more than she believed in herself. Yes. Yes. I'm glad I'm well, my clients. Place. I'm that, I'm that perpetual cheerleader. <laughs> yes, me too. I am there too. I'm right there with you with mine. It's just like, I love, I love my clients. And, and I always say, love your guts. I'm sure you, I've said that to you. That's my jam. It's like, I really do love mm -hmm. people and it's genuine. Yes. And, and, and I yep. love, I love that. Love that you say it. So Amanda Rose, what keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night and totally upfront and honest and I'm an amazing sleeper. Okay. Is when I when I launch something, will people want it? Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I I'm a try I'm the somebody who puts who trusts my guidance, sure. right? I get a great idea, I run with it, and then I'm like, wait a minute, there's not enough people getting it yet. What's right. wrong with it, right? Right, That's, right. That I'm always love... asking spirit to let that go because I want to help so many people. Right. I love that transparency too, uh, mm -hmm. because I'm I'm the same way where I'm if I hit with a maybe a client that I'm coaching, it's like, man, did I, did I do it right? You know, did I hit them emotionally where they needed to ask the right questions? Thank you for being transparent. So what do you think people misunderstand the most about Amanda Rose? What do I think people misunderstand the most about me? Well, oh, that's really, that's really interesting. I'm going to check in with my intuition because it's eluding me at the moment. Oh, so, so sometimes what, so that I don't have hard times. Thank you. We do. <laughs> we do. I love it. I love it. You think because when you're up there and everything's rah, rah, like I had, I did speeches after friends died, you know, mm -hmm. and like you were human, you know, people yeah. you get up in front of people and they think that, oh, this is, yeah, okay. So let's take out of this equation family. Let's take out like the basics of water, food, oxygen, and let's take out anything electronic, meaning no phones, anything. What are three things Amanda Rose can't live without? My husband. Okay. My two dogs. Okay. Two adopted dogs. Okay. And living on the beach. I know, isn't they great? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is it's my like, sanctuary. It's my, <laughs> I put my toes in the water and any stress or anything else just leaves my body. I love it. Me too. I, I have to be in the ocean three times a week minimum. 
uh, yeah. and, and just even if it's a go dunk and, and, and leave. That's just because yeah. I know what the salt water is healing me inside out of bad allergies. I go in there, it, it takes them away at least for three or four days. It's just crazy. So what is Amanda Rose's definition of a life well lived? Life well lived? Mm -hmm. Showing other people that you can have it all. That you can have great relationships, you can have a successful career, you can have financial success, you can have awesome health. Yeah. And you can have all of your heart's desires. You just have it. to be open to receiving it. I love it. Love it. So, squad, we're going to take my good friend Amanda Rose Igo through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Uh, time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. We are back with my good friend, Amanda Rose Igo, just speaker extraordinaire, awesome teacher, awesome coach, just fantastic, vibrant, beautiful person. And Amanda Rose, we have a leveling up lightning round. And you and I could talk in each one of these for 15, 20 minutes, maybe even an hour, but you got five seconds with no explanations. You ready? Ready. Let's level up. What is the best leveling up advice Amanda Rose has ever received? Hire an awesome coach. Yes. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Going into the beach, as we mentioned before, Love and it. just letting it stress out. Yep. Love it. Other than AmandaRose.com and also my, my shameless plug for time to shine today.com, what website does Amanda Rose like to go to to level up? What website do I like to go to to level up? I just love audio audiobooks. Yeah, there you go. Love it. Love it. Love it. You see me walking down the street, Fergie's a little bit in his doldrums. You want to hand me a book to level me up. What is it? Hiring the Heavens by Gene Slater. I've never read it, but I've heard of it. Put that in the show notes, please. Awesome. Thank you. What's your most commonly used emoji when you text? The, the heart with the smiley face with hearts all around it. Love it. Love it. Nicknames growing up? Pachaba Bird by my Uncle Dominic. <laughs> That's like awesome. my dad growing up. <laughs> love it. Chess or checkers? A chess. Okay. No, no, checkers. checkers. <laughs> we never <Yes>. played chess. <laughs> I'm a checkers guy too. Favorite charity and organization you like to give your time or money to? Best Friends Animal Sanctuary, the largest animal rescue in the nation. Love it, love it, love it. So there's a sandwich called Amanda, the Amanda Rose. What's on that sandwich? It's on that sandwich. What's so I'm a, that sandwich? I am a vegan, yeah. so it's got okay. vegan cheese, a yeah. vegan burger, and vegan mayonnaise. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Last question. You can elaborate a little bit on this one, but what's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? 60s. Motown. 60s. Love it. Motown. I'm from Detroit, so thank you for saying that. That's awesome. So, Amanda Rose, how can we find you? They can go to amandarose.com. I'm going to spell it out. A-M-O-N-D-A-R-O-S-E. It's like Amanda with an O in the middle. Amandarose.com. Love it. And then let's talk about a little about what you may be able to offer our squad today. Yeah, so this is super exciting. I have, because many people would like to know when it comes to speaking, what are their strengths and what are their weaknesses? So I have a speaker personality quiz and they can go to speakerpersonalityquiz.com to get that actual quiz. And it looks at what your strengths are, what are you really great at, and what do you want to do so that you connect with the entire audience? Because not everybody has the same personality as you. So you got to be able to connect with what they need the most from you. Love it. I love it. And they can find that at where again? Can you please repeat that? Yep. Speakerpersonalityquiz.com. Wow. And you got that URL. That's pretty darn good. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. So, and also squad, all of that will be in the show notes along with her two books. Um, I'm going to do a giveaway uh, for the pain-free public speaking to the first person that puts connect and compel, connect and compel in any of our social media links, uh, it puts it in the comments. And I will personally buy the book and Amanda Rose hopefully will autograph it and John Hancock it and we'll get it out to you. So just put that connect and compel into the comments. And Amanda Rose, please do me one last solid and leave our squad with one last knowledge nugget they can take with them, internalize and take action. Uh, perfect. In my life, I've been able to accomplish what I've been able to accomplish because I've been willing to take the next step. Whatever, whether it's to apply the principles we talked about or something else, you have to take the next steps. And when you do, when you take that next step, God, spirit, universe, whatever you call it, will take two or three, but you have to take the next step. 
Love that. I love that. And squad, I love that you said take the next step because that's what I want you to do is go over to that link that we shared and, and take the next step if it resonates with you wanting to level up your speaking. And I love that she says take the next step because like we say, inch by inch, it's a cinch. By the yard, it's hard. You just have to take that next step. You know, she, Amanda Rose is someone that's happier when she's helping others. She has a passion for serving bigger than her fear. You know, you don't know what to say when you're speaking. Let's get with Amanda Rose and her company, and she'll teach you how to connect, get involved, compel to take action with her expertise. You know, she wants you to remember, if you're getting there speaking, you want to balance the masculine with the feminine, so speak to the entire crowd. You know, you know she says leaders address issues with grace and ease to get stuff done. Doesn't mean it's easy, but you, they address them, and they take action, and they get moving forward. And she's going to be remembered as somebody that believed in others more than herself. And I think that's just a huge go-giver thing to say. And, and she does. She, the proof's in the pudding. And, you know, not everybody's going to love you. They're not going to get you. Just let it go. Do and follow your passion. You know, and she wants to just remember that you can have it all. And no matter what your passion is, find somebody. If it's speaking and want to get on stage and level up your speaking ability, please let us make a warm introduction to Amanda Rose I go. And Amanda, thank you, Rose. Thank you so much for coming on. You level up your health. You level up your wealth. You're humble, yet you're hungry. You earned your, you earned your varsity squad letter here at Time to Shine today. Thank you so much for coming on. I love your guts so much.